In the last tutorial, we introduced this concept of uh, putting in margin rules on different div sections to try and lay out our site in an appropriate way. In this tutorial, we're going to continue on with that and we're going to keep on tweaking the margins uh, to get this particular site to do with Christy Moore uh, to be laid out according to my mock-up. In the last tutorial, though, if you remember, what we were doing was we were putting in the right margin on each of those different div sections. And I've named the div sections top left, top main, bottom left, and bottom name, bottom main. Uh, we put in uh, the right margin of 40 pixels on each of those different sections. But we have to go into each of the different rules denoted by these IDs. Uh, so this was uh, top left, for instance. We went in there, edited that rule, put in a margin right of 40 pixels. Then we went to top main, put in a margin right of 40 pixels. Bottom left, went into that rule, put in a margin of 40 pixels, and so on. Anytime that you're doing a duplication of effort like that, it's always a warning sign that you could be doing it in a more efficient way. If I think that each one of those different div sections are going to have a margin right, and all of those margin rights are going to be the same thing, it would be much better to actually hold that one rule in one place so that all of those different div sections could look to that rule and kind of say, right, all of our margins are going to be, uh, all of our margin rights are going to be 40 pixels. And so this brings in this feature in cascading style sheets called classes. Classes work in almost an identical way to IDs in cascading style sheets. And the rule of thumb is when you use a class and when you use an ID, is that classes, you put rules in classes that apply to a number of different elements. And IDs are used when you've got rules that apply to one specific element only. And this cuts down on the amount of work that we have to do. It's best to further explain classes and IDs uh, by using an example. And I'm going to use this example here of the Christian Moore website. I've got four different div sections here. Top left, top main, bottom left, and bottom main. Each of those different div sections have a number of things in common. For instance, they are all going to be uh, uh, have a background color of white they're all going to have roughly the same types of margins. Then past that, you've got each one of those div sections probably have certain things that are specific to those div sections. So for instance, the height and width, the dimensions of them and things like that. Now we've already identified the height and the width of each of those different div sections by using these IDs in here in the rules that I can see here in the CSS styles panel. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new class and I'm going to put any rules that are common to each one of those div sections into that class and then I'm going to make sure that I identify each of those div sections as being a member of that class. So let's start off. Uh, I'm going to put in a new CSS rule here at the bottom of my CSS styles panel. I'll click on that. I want to make sure that it's of type class. And the type of class that I want to have is content. Now notice that I put in a full stop before I type in content. Just as I do with IDs, I put in a hashtag before I write in the ID name. With classes, I always put in a full stop to let the style sheet and to let the browser know that this is a class that we're talking about. So dot .content is the name of the class that I'm going to create. Where did I get the name content? I just came up with it. It was appropriate. It was relevant to what I want to do. So any of these classes that I uh, that I name, I always make them up myself. Uh, but as long as we keep them consistent when we go to identify each of the different div sections as being members of that class. So I'm going to click OK here. And I've got a new CSS definition dialog box for that content class. At this stage, I'm just going to put in one or two simple rules in here, just so I can show you that it's going to work. And then I'll come back later on and edit it in more detail. So, for instance, background color, I said it was going to be white. So I'm going to change that background color there to white. And let's change one of these margins as well. So I'm going to go into the box category. And like I said, the top margins of all, 
each of these different div sections, they are all going to be something reasonably similar. So I'm going to uh, make sure that my top margin is, we'll say, 20 pixels. Click OK. Now nothing is going to happen on my design yet because I haven't identified any particular areas of being a member of that class. The next key thing that I need to do is I need to go to each one of these different content areas, these different div sections, and identify them that they are all part of this content class. So I can see down here in the CSS Properties Inspector that I've got a little class drop-down menu here. If I drop that down, I can see that any of the classes that I've identified in my CSS will pop up here. So I can actually click here on content and that will apply all the rules that I've identified in the content class to this div section. So as you can see, I can see a top margin pop in here of 20 pixels. The background color has also gone to white, although that's not as obvious because I've got a picture covering the whole different uh, area of that div section. So I'm going to do that same process to each of these different areas. So the top main, I'm going to say that that is a member of the content class also. And I can see a 20 pixel top margin pop in there. I'm going to go to this bottom left section and switch that to being a member of the content class as well. I see a 20 pixel margin pop in there. And lastly, I'm going to go into this bottom section here as well, bottom main. And I'm going to switch that to be a member of the content class also. So I can see now that each of those different sections, they are all members of the content class. They all look to the rules uh, from the content class and they all take this 20 pixels top margin from that content class. They are also individual div sections as well and they still take their rules from their ID rules that are put into the um, into this stuff. For example, this top left div section here, it's taking its rules not only from the content class but also from the top left ID rule that is put into the style sheet as well. And that's to be expected. That's the reason why classes and IDs were both invented. They both work in a very similar way, but it's more the thinking behind it. And it's so that the control of each of these different sections is more efficient for me being the web developer. Let's take another example. Now that I've created this content class in my CSS style sheet, and I've identified each of these different div sections as being members of that content class, I can now just change any rules in the content class and it will apply to all of those four div sections at once. So one thing that I'd like to do now is I'd like to adjust the left margin of each of those different div sections. So I can go in here to the content class, edit it, and go down to box, and I'm going to adjust the left margin. I'm going to put in a margin of 30 pixels in here, and I'm going to click apply. Now just when I click apply, notice that this left margin, it's going to apply to each of those different four different div sections all in one go. So that's much easier then having to go into each individual ID and put in 30 pixels left margin, 30 pixels again, 30 pixels again, and 30 pixels again. It cuts down on the amount of work that I have to do, and it's a lot easier to keep track of the rules that apply to many different elements in one go. And so, now that I've adjusted each of those different margins, if I go back to what I did in the previous tutorial, which is adjusting the margin rights by 40 pixels, and having done that in each of the different IDs of each of those different div sections, I've now got a much more appropriate and much more efficient way of handling those margin rights. So I'm going to adjust that and I'm going to go into my style sheet and I'm going to take out each of the different margin rights from each of those different div sections. So number two, number three, number four, and I'm going to put that margin right rule in here in the content class. 
And so this time I only have to write it once. And then when I go back into my design view, everything is the same. But now if I want to adjust that margin right rule, I only have to do it in one place in my style sheet. So that's the reasoning and the application of classes and IDs in a style sheet and in a website. And I could adjust any of those different margins that I've done in the last few minutes and just tweak them until I get the website layout looking in exactly the way that I want it. And that's it for this tutorial.